on the question of uh, the threats the Hindu society is facing. I have, I am presently in the United States because I, every year during the summer, come back to teach uh, two courses at uh, Harvard. And uh, this particular visit, uh, I'm coming in the background of what's happened in India recently. And therefore, uh, I am uh, grateful to the Kanchi Kamakoti uh, Seva Forum for organizing this uh, talk. Hindu society is today fragmented. It's fragmented by caste, it's in disarray, and it's facing a threat discovered in near Muzaffarabad, which is in Pakistan held Kashmir, where, which is called a Sharda temple, it's still called Sharda temple, and the town nearby is also called Sharda, where Adi Shankara prayed, and this was brought to my attention by the Shingeri Shankaracharya, who is a great scholar, and who urged me to do something about it. And I did, and I, I wrote a letter to President Musharraf, and I hope one of these days very soon to go. I may remind you, or tell you, that Kailash Mansaro was opened at my initiative, when I, were, when I met uh, Tan Xiaoping uh, in 1981. And I was the first one to go after 30 years. Of course now almost a thousand people go every year. And therefore time has come where I would urge us that for the survival of Hindu society, we should now start thinking about the society much more than the family and the individual. Today the Kanchi Shankara case and uh, other developments in the, in the country have laid, threat, laid the threat bare. The Kanchi Shankara case is a bogus case because I have studied it and I'm saying it with the authority of a person who knows law, who has been a minister of law who has fought a lot of litigation in his life, never lost to any one of them. A lot of bogus litigation, a lot of bogus cases have been foisted on me too. But uh, no, nothing remained. And it is bogus because the Supreme who are now running a huge campaign against the Hindu religion. The recent example of Benny Hinn from the United States. He came to address a congregation in Bangalore. The government cleared the Air Force, Indian Air Force area, which has never been given to anybody for him. And the chief minister himself attended, central ministers attended. They all prostrated before the uh, uh, before Mr. Benny Hinn. And Mr. Benny Hinn had about 200 people come on the stage either as lame or dying of cancer or having other ailments and all he did was put his hand on them and they got cured immediately. The police later on uh, obviously got out of hand. They later on declared maybe in a fit of conscience, that these people never had any ailment and they were brought from the neighboring Tamil Nadu and they were coach, <coughs> coached for two weeks before on how to walk as a lame person, how to behave like a cancer patient, etc. And this was, whole thing was a fraud. In fact, many hints had been suggested in a press conference when he had held a press conference that uh, a medical doctor from an independent hospital be present to first examine the patients and then let them come up, which he refused. And at the end of the his uh, three-day congregation, 
he thanked Ms. Sonia Gandhi for enabling him to hold the function in the first place and providing state support for this. If you are a secular government, why should the state have supported it? But I have found that in the United States, Mr. Benny Hinn is under investigation of the IRS and many others for fraud. And uh, the Associated Press re released a uh, news item uh, from Dallas saying the Internal Revenue Service is looking into the operations and finances of televangelist, they don't even call him a padre, televangelist Benny Hinn's organization according to sources. RIS, 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 IRS wouldn't discuss the case, but a representative of the Benny Hinn ministry confirmed that investigation was in. This is not the kind of secularism that can survive. So the question becomes, what should we do? Of course, let me say that in other occasions, when crooks have been found in religious uh, circumstances, people have come to defend them whether they have committed a crime or not. There is a case of Mr. Charles Keating, who donated one million dollars to Mother Teresa. Later on, the Los Angeles County filed a case against Charles Keating for fraud, because he had defrauded 17,000 individuals of $252 million. Mother Teresa wrote a letter to the judge itself a judge called Mr. Ito, saying that since he had been donating for God's work, he should let be let off. The judge didn't reply, but he asked the district Anchi Mutt, which has taken place on a series of temples in, in Karnataka where, where the hundi has been seized, where it happened in North India of terrorist attacks. We have found no other minority groups has come to defend Hinduism. So therefore, I would suggest the following. First of all, all of us now, once again, will have to foster a clear concept of what it means to be a Hindu. Going to temples is not sufficient, necessary but not sufficient. I've written a book recently, which will be published in September. It's available on, on my website, www.indiarights.org. And I've titled it as The Fundamentals of National Renaissance. And I think identity means not just being religious. Identity means a correct understanding of who we are, what our ancient history is. The history books introduced by the Congress government in 1947, or continued by the Congress government, were written by people who didn't want to foster the idea of a united India. Not even united Hindus. They fostered the concept that caste is by birth, it did become by birth, but caste is not determined by birth. If caste was determined by birth, Valmiki couldn't be called a Rishi. Vishwamitra couldn't be called a Rishi. Veda Vyasa could not be called a Rishi. Uh, and it's being taught in such scientific ways now, and they're being taught in very scientific ways in U.S. universities. There are cassettes on it. And I think learning of Sanskrit should be taken as a fundamental aspect of Hindu identity. And we should try to learn to converse in it. Accepting Devanagari script as a common script for the whole of India is another fundamental Hindu identity. I'm happy to say that uh, in India now, in Tamil Nadu, milestones now have Devanagari. Of course, some ignoramuses say that is Hindi, that's not Hindi. It's a script in which Hindi is written. It's a script in which Marathi is written. It's a script in which Nepali is written. 
It's a script in which Sanskrit is written. It's a script in which uh, almost Gujarati's, Gujarati's script is very close to it. And in fact, if you, if you know the science behind the Devanagari script, all the scripts are originally descendants of Brahmi, including Tamil script. They're all descendants of the same script, namely Brahmi. So therefore, for national unity, we need a common script, and that has to be Devanagari, and it should be compulsorily taught. I would suggest third thing, that those of us who want a clear Hindu identity must work, because we are a democracy, for only those candidates who now propagate a clear-cut Hindu agenda. And I say this now because of the the threats that the Hindu society is facing. I wouldn't have said this a few years ago, but today there is a threat, and the threat is from both abroad and within, and therefore those of us who do not consider democracy as a spectator sport to watch two politicians fight and enjoy that fight must therefore work for those candidates, either you yourself stand but you certainly must vote and you must certainly work in some way for those who believe in a Hindu agenda. And what that agenda is, I can tell you at the question time. ...who was a tea shop owner. He was a candidate against us. They couldn't find any other candidate. And the entire state voted against her party and she didn't get a single seat. Hence, uh, the main thing is to make the Hindus perceive the danger. And then there is just no difficulty in getting the Hindus united. And Hindus have united over the centuries, contrary to uh, contrary to the history written that we have been subjugated by foreigners. We have consistently fought all through the 150 years from uh, Akbar to Aurangzeb. There were fights. The Vijayanagaram Empire was a larger empire than the Mughal Empire was ever. And Shivaji fought. After that, uh, when the British came, India fought. In fact, even temporarily in 1857, we had uh, deposed the British government and, and uh, an Indian emperor was brought back. So, therefore, uh, I, I would... Uh, there the independent court. It may be... Maybe the Kanchi Chakracharya might get convicted in the uh, Sessions Court, but it won't be uh, upheld by even the most pliant Supreme Court uh, in, in a national framework. The more important question is that you have asked is, when will these attacks stop? According to me, the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister is performing according to a script given to her from the center. And that is because she herself has facing so much prosecution that she's terrified of going to jail herself. And, uh, and the case that is being held in Bangalore is being held in a Congress government state. And therefore she is in a mood to oblige them so that they don't get too rough with her. And therefore why the center is uh, doing like that? Well. Uh, there is also rivalry amongst the Shankaracharyas. There is a Shankaracharya of Dwarka called, um, uh, what is his name? Uh, Sarupana, who is uh, promised to say that if he is made the sole Shankaracharya at the national level, then he will hold a congregation in Delhi and declare Sonia Gandhi as an avatar of Durga. <laughs> and she needs that kind of support because she is under attack for being foreign. And she needs an Indian religious preacher to say that. So the elimination of Jaina Saraswati, who is perhaps uh, the most uh, well-known Shankaracharya of India today, is essential for that. Moreover, Jaindra Saraswati had gone between the Dalits and tried to co-opt them into the Hindu framework. And that Dalit 
some of the community is a fertile ground for all these rogue Christian missionary elements that are coming. And therefore there is a conflict between these elements who come from abroad and those who uh, and uh, the activities of gender system. So therefore, as long as a government which is uh, itself under blackmail, the Tamil Nadu government, is in power, the, the illegal activities of the Indian government, whether it's the state or the center, you would assist me in this process. For example, against actions against religious freedom internationally can be taken up by the U.S. government. It was done in the case of Narendra Modi. Whether it was rightly done or wrongly done, I'm not going into that. In my opinion, it was wrongly done. And I'll explain why. But in the case of the Kanchi Shankara, those of you who hold American passports should write to your senator and congressman to write to the president to take it up with the Indian government. Then why are you harassing this man? When the Supreme Court has said there is no prima facie case. This is religious intolerance. And the American, Americans have an act. I don't know the exact wording. I think it's a religious freedom act or something like that. And there are ways on which you can also open a new flank. And this flank is valued in India. Indians are still very crazy about what foreigners think of us. And therefore, you should uh, open a new flank in this country and put pressure on Jayalalitha to behave. The HRNC Act has to be scrapped and replaced by some statute which permits self-governance by temples, by appointing committees and uh, having audit facilities. Now, that doesn't mean that a party should come to power which is pro-Hindu. In my opinion, in the next assembly elections, even if five MLAs get elected in the assembly elections who, are, who get elected on the Hindu agenda, and uh, nobody gets a majority, for example, and you need these five, then I think uh, any government that comes, one of the things they will be happy to do to come to power is to scrap this act. It's the advantage of coalition governments that a few people can make a lot of difference. People ask me why you keep Janta Party so small? Because if I keep it big, I can collect the humiliated. So I, I would say that uh, on the recruitment policy of the Kanchimat, I will not go into it, just as I would not go into the recruitment policy of a corporation in America. Uh, that is, a, as long as it is not offensive, if they restrict all to a club, if somebody says, I, you know, I won't take you in a club because uh, you don't meet our qualifications, uh, I would not quarrel with that, except unless it is something which, uh, which, is, uh, which is offensive to human nature. So I think uh, uh, the main thing is that Shankaracharya Jayendra Saraswati Swamigal has distinguished himself as a person who is treated Hinduism as a single entity in which all Hindus are equal. Dr. Swami, my name is... When the society itself is attacked, we, we must retaliate. And retaliate in such a way then it becomes a disincentive for future attacks on us. That is the distinction we have to make. And that is what we have to do. I think most of all you should cease to worry about your image. If you think that something is good for Hinduism, do it. Don't care about your image. In the long run people will respect you better if you mean what you say and say what you mean. Any more questions about the song? From, from, from what you have been mentioning about uh, what I, and the mere inquiry of that will make a difference.
I know it will make a difference. The uh, second thing you can do is that whenever somebody visits from here, from India here, a minister, prime minister is here tomorrow, make an attempt to get an appointment. Certainly it will be conveyed. You say on behalf of the Kanchi Forum or Kanchi Kamakoti Seva Forum, we want to present a memorandum against the bogus case foisted on the Kanchi Acharyas. That will also have an effect. Keep the flame of protest alive. And uh, I don't think uh, there is much more that you can do. Uh, I, being a politician, I've always asked for money, but uh, I'm not asking. Uh, because we raise enough within the country for this. But uh, I would say that you should uh, collect money and publicize through your websites. If necessary, even employ somebody who goes scans through the materials, consult lawyers on how you can file even litigation within this country. I'm told that uh, against Saudi Arabia there are a large number of suits which have been filed for 9-11. Do that. I think uh, Jelta has some property in uh, Chicago. Find out about it. <laughs> and then she's liable for a suit here. Yeah. There are ways of doing it. Consult lawyers. And, uh, and I think uh, just keep it multi-pronged and keep at it. Because it's a just cause and you're about to... Pray, and this was brought to my attention by the Shingeri Shankaracharya, who is a great scholar and who urged me to do something about it. And I did. And I, I wrote a letter to President Musharraf and I hope one of these days very soon to go. I may remind you or tell you that Kailash Mansaro was opened at my initiative when I, when I met uh, Tan Xiaoping. Uh, in 1981, Teva Forum for organizing this uh, talk. Hindu society is today fragmented. It's fragmented by caste, it's in disarray, and it's facing a threat discovered in near Muzaffarabad, which is in Pakistan held Kashmir, where, which is called a Sharda temple, it's still called Sharda temple, and the town nearby is also called Sharda, where Adi Shankara, the Kanji Shankara case is a bogus case, because I have studied it, and I'm saying it with the authority of a person who knows law, who has been a minister of law, who has fought a lot of litigation in his life, never lost to any one of them. A lot of bogus litigation, a lot of bogus cases have been foisted on me too. But uh, no, nothing remained. And it is bogus because the Supreme who are now running a huge campaign against the Hindu religion. The re and I was the first one to go after 30 years. Of course now almost a thousand people go every year. And therefore, time has come where I would urge us that for the survival of Hindu society, we should now start thinking about the society much more than the family and the individual. Today, the Kanchi Shankara case and uh, other developments in the, in the country have laid, threat, laid the threat bare on the question of uh, the threats the Hindu society is facing. I have, I am presently in the United States because I, every year during the summer, come back to teach uh, two courses at uh, Harvard. And uh, this particular visit uh, I'm coming in the background of what's happened in India recently.
and therefore uh, I am uh, grateful to the Kanchi Kamakoti uh, 